Okay, so I'm going to share with you a date. It's September 24th. It seems like it's coming up a lot with regards to what some paperwork that we had to complete. It started to come up on billboards, and me and my wife kind of giggled when we did see it on one specific cheap. I mentioned it to her. I said, uh, that's that date that keeps coming up, September 24th. So let's go ahead and watch for it in the news. Let's see what happens. God bless. If uh, it has any significance to you, let me know. If there's something that you should be aware of or some precautions that you should be taking on that date, then I would definitely advise you take them. Thanks for watching. Scripture says, He, Jacob, had a dream, and behold, a ladder was set on the earth with its top reaching to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. This is the visual Jacob sees in the dream. But what does it mean? The ladder represents the connection between God and man. It demonstrates the God who created the universe desires an intimate relationship with his creation, especially mankind, and most importantly, that he is the one who initiates that connection, conversation, and relationship. Unlike the story of the Tower of Babel, in which man tried to build a tower to connect with the divine, here God proves that his connection can only be made by his power and grace. Any connection to God must begin with him. How is Jesus Christ our Jacob's ladder? Jesus said to him, Am I with you so long a time, and you have not known me? Philip, the one who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? John 14, 7-9 For this reason, Christ is the mediator of the new covenant, that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. The symbolism of Jacob's ladder may have represented the earthly physical covenant between God and the children of Israel. Jesus Christ, however, as the new ladder and mediator, would initiate a new spiritual covenant made available to everyone. He would exchange our sin for his righteousness so that we could know God and experience the intimate relationship he intended from the beginning. On the next day he wanted to depart from Galilee and found Philip. And Jesus said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethlehem, the town of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found the one whom Moses wrote about in the law, and the prophets wrote about, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said about him, Look, a true Israelite in whom is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, From where do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, because I said to you that I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to all of you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. John 1, 43-51 Typically when I studied this passage, I heard it preached. The link has been made between Jacob's ladder or stairway and the role of Jesus. Jacob, in his dream, saw a connection between heaven and earth, divine and human, supernatural and natural, demonstrated by an ascending and descending angels. Jesus fills this by being the link between heaven and earth as the divine human God-man. That's why, figuratively, I say that because the Gospels never record it happening. Disciples will see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man as the nexus between the earthly and the heavenly realms. But it got me thinking that there could be more to it than that. What if the allusion to Genesis 28 doesn't stop at the latter, but it includes Jacob's theopany encounter with Yahweh? In Genesis, Jacob doesn't just see the vision of the latter, but immediately afterwards, Yahweh himself is standing beside him. Could Jesus be saying that if the disciples continue to follow him and watch him closely, 
they won't merely have a vision of angels, but an encounter with Yahweh themselves, it certainly matches well with Jesus' later exchange with Philip. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Am I with you so long a time, and you have not known me, Philip? The one who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? John 14, 7-9.